Welcome back to the last afternoon of the Auto Tech and Tech Robot Show. This is a fantastic afternoon. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Discovery is the world's leader in real live entertainment with over 3 billion subscribers around the world. And you may know our brands like Discovery Channel, Velocity, Travel Channel, and many, many others. Now, what has me excited today is that I've actually emceed this stage for the past few years, and the lineup this afternoon is spectacular. But don't take my word for it. We've actually asked a few other experts as well. Let's roll the clips. Um, because I saw Cruel Intentions when I was probably about 14, 15 years old. I knew that the car in the very famous scene where Sebastian is driving, the Jaguar X, I think 140 convertible vintage, 1956, that by far is my dream car. Uh, my dream car, if I'm gonna dream big, it would be my favorite car as a little kid growing up when I was like five years old watching cartoons. Speed Racer, have you ever seen, have you ever seen that Speed Racer? You ever seen Speed Racer cartoons? So Speed Racer had this really cool car, it was called the Mach 5. And he would race in the Mach 5, and I used to pretend that I was Speed Racer in the Mach 5. I guess my dream car would be the Batmobile. Batman's car is the coolest car, and I think that would be my dream car. The car I love to see created is actually a spin on the retro vintage cars, but with all the new features. Something that you can cruise around, have maybe Bluetooth set up, have a good speaker system. To reference another comic book, you know Nick Fury from S.H.I.E.L.D.? He has a car that can fly. So I think that would be the best. It can go on the ground, and then we get stuck in traffic. It can just like fly, you know, prowl around the uh, rush hour traffic. So that would be the best idea. If I could have any car created, uh, I would want it to be kind of sporty, very beautiful and elegantly designed. I would want all the newest technology in it, good sound system, navigation, all the things to help you park in New York City, I would want it to be a, uh, a, a car that would not have much of an impact on our environment using sustainable energy. I'm not ready for the automatic driving car. I want to be able to drive myself, so I'm too old for that. I want to be able to drive myself, but I want as much help as possible. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Now in the next handful of sessions, we'll hear from established brands like BMW and some of the world's leading startups like billion dollar valued Taxify. Are you guys ready for that? Yeah? Clapping? Yes? It's going to be a good afternoon? All right, let's go. Magic meets foresight, key developments in BMW, it's changing the world. Let's hop in. By 2021, our next automaker expects to have self-driving autonomous vehicles on the road. But the reality is that we don't live in 2021 yet. In the meantime, they're working on developments, innovations, and improvements for inside the car of how the vehicle can interact with the inhabitants and vice versa. Our next presenter heads up BMW's electronics department and he'll show off some of their latest innovations. So we're gonna show you a quick video and right after that, we'll be joined by BMW's Christoph Grothe.
Good afternoon. Now, you've seen some pretty amazing stuff on the screen, and I'm a tech guy, so I'd love to explain to you all the underlying technology. But, you know, tech alone is not it. And at BMW, we really believe that the real magic of intelligent cars stands on getting more and more natural and humanoid, powered but not dominated by technology. So what is our situation nowadays? If I look at myself, and possibly quite a few of you, you know, it's, it's more like this. Now, there's plenty of complexity, rush, and sometimes stress. And for some of us, rush is we're rush junkies. But really, to be in command of your time is that new privilege. So in those times, you know, what cars needed then in order um, to get us there? You know, what really matters to us? Um, I don't want to generalize, but isn't it more like about stuff like, you know, spending quality time with family and friends, you know, um, taking chances to relax, um, stuff like getting back to our roots, and maybe even, you know, enjoying life and simple pleasures, for example, here in Portugal, surfing the challenging waves or the beaches. You know what, it's not, it's certainly not that fifth sub menu with a new feature. A new area for BMW of sheer driving pleasure um, has cars that make life easier and please more beautiful. Now, what kind of cars needed, actually, in order to achieve that? You know, it ought to be subtle, straightforward. It ought to be simple. It ought to be intuitive. So maybe it's kind of this. One more click, sorry. This. Um, this one is certainly simple, straightforward, and also intuitive. But for BMW, it's never been an option just to revert to good old times. Rather, you should always expect BMW to push for innovation and cutting-edge technology, navigating through modern times safely, comfortably, without sacrificing simplicity of iconic products. So what we need is cutting-edge technology that is subtle um, and pleased. Again, that's elegant. Now, um, I'm not sure who knows that, but the new Elp Fuller Mini, you know, it's in Hamburg, new concert hall, it's a great example of bearing all those attributes. You know, it, it has outstanding technical solutions delivering a superb sound um, experience, but at the same time, it's really elegant, it's pure, and it's leaving digital and analog technology almost invisible. So is that really everything that's needed for a car? Um, you know, even now, that car would still be pretty much a thing. And at BMW, we want that car to be rather a buddy or a companion. A companion that is natural to interact with, that is reliable, that is anticipating our needs by knowing us better than you do yourselves. So basically, you know, that BMW should be all of this. Now, that is a bit of a tall order, I admit, and I wish I myself was at least a little bit like that, uh, which I'm not, quite frankly. Um, but here we go. Now, real magic, in our view, is really about elegant simplicity. Here you have a glimpse at the INX Shoka that some of you might have seen. And clearly, you know, this is not a giveaway about any future products, as my communication guys told me. Um, so I'll have to talk about that afterwards. So how do we translate this sort of experience into products that you can buy? Uh, first, we really focus on individualism. You know, people have their own preferences. And believe me, BMW customers vary self-confidently. So, so we respect differences in behavior, in habits, in culture. And that's important now without sacrificing simplicity and foremost coherence in the product. So what does it mean for BMW? Um, if I take the new BMW OS 7, that's the new UI that we've just introduced in the X5 and in the 3 Series, um, then you find that it's a fully integrated experience between the mobile and the car. You know, it actively responds to the driver's requirements and situations. Um, and when you approach the car and enter it um, through the new smart access system, 
that you will be greeted by a welcome screen pushing personalized, actionable content to you. Now, my preferences usually very much depend on situations. When I'm on my way to work, then usually what I would find is that I'm mentally already at work. I want traffic, unfortunately. I want communications. I want my calendar. On the way home, though, on the other hand, I'm in the situation where I really try to wind down. I want entertainment so that my family doesn't have to put up with me in working mode. Now, at your fingertips, you have easily composed situational screens for your situation. And you can use active pads, you know, using stuff like traffic info, parking maps, or even stuff like GeForce meters and off-road gauges. That is all easily accessible in an easy, flatter, and importantly, active menu structure. Now, anticipation has always been a hallmark of excellent service. Now, on the contrary, daily routines are really a nuisance. So the intelligent personal assistant, it learns those routines and habits, applies them, but only in the appropriate context. Like, for example, having this espresso every night. That's a nice habit. Natural language understanding we introduced back in 2015 um, in, in BMW. And this year, we really pushed it further by fully personalizing it and deploying more AI on it. I feel cold on the passenger seat means the temperature is raised just there. And take me home. Uh, if you're not ambiguous about what your home is, we'll actually take you there. Now, technology, in our view, should be present when you need it and should, it should disappear discreetly thereafter. The, in the X5, the 3, and also the, the X7, you can see a very clean interior, and that's really reaping the benefit of intelligent and natural multimodal interaction. Uh, at the same time, usability is improved over that physical button that you didn't find anyway in the first place. In the, in the Vision 9 Next, you know, we really push this further by amalgamating cutting-edge technology on the one hand with magical ways of, of interaction. Now, when you buy a new car, getting that new car is certainly a joyful moment. But is it right to be just at fireworks? Um, once we grow accustomed to our cars, you know, we're, we're ready for more. And shouldn't that car really surprise you? Um, with new capabilities throughout its lifetime. You know, we, we want to have with BMW's ongoing joy and excitement, and therefore we'll keep that car fresh for you. So we need an updatable and enrichable system. And I'll tell you, you know, for example, with the digital key, uh, it's a great feature at launch, but it will change as I know. So that feature, which is stretching well beyond infotainment, uh, is certainly a feature that's fully updatable. There will be evolving features, there will be completely new ones, and the good thing is it's not only accessible to those who bought the car tomorrow, who buy the car tomorrow, but those who bought it yesterday. Connectivity is a foundation for that, and uh, we've done that for 20 years, and we know how to deliver it in quality. Now, the remote software update that's, that's required for that uh, works really easily. Uh, it provides customers with an easy way to keep vehicles updated. There's no manual triggers. There's an automatic download in the car, and then you can install it while the car is actually parked. So what really matters is, you know, this way you won't lose time at the workshop, and you won't lose out on features either. It works for the entire system. That's important. So. Um, for example, if you have driver assistance functionality, that changes. Or if you want this smart home case study, then you'll see that actually it stretches well beyond infotainment. And you can continuously improve this feature. You can add this feature. And last but not least, that's a reality in automotive too. You can improve security when needed. Now I said we want your car to be a companion. So... Um, a companion, in order to get a valued companion, it should not just be willing, but it should really be capable to do that. I scratch upon AI, and I see two applications for AI. One of them is really, this clicker doesn't work. All right, there we go. Um, one of them is really adapting 
to new unspecified, that's a true horror for engineers, unspecified situations. The other one is to learn over time, and in particular about you as an individual. Now, what does that mean for BMW again? All right. Um, one of them is you shouldn't just recognize situations, but you should manage them setting the right priorities. And in this case, with the two guys going surfing, you know, the only question they have is to which beach. And so the car should understand that context and shouldn't spoil that situation if it found a to-do item in your phone's action list. It shouldn't be skewed either by advertising either. You know, assistance can be a pain, uh, but they mustn't be, not particularly in the car. Now, this one is not another reminder cluttering your home screen, but it's about learning your emotional state. You know, in the current X5, driver's attentiveness is monitored by an intelligent camera. The intelligent personal assistance carrying car mode now changes the car's behavior according to your emotional state. You know, today, that's by natural voice inputs. Tomorrow, maybe through that software update, contextually. The natural interaction relies on speech, gesture, and vision. In the car, therefore, you know, on microphones and cameras. If that doesn't worry you, it does worry me. Um, for, for BMW, privacy is not a luxury. Um, and therefore, you know, we want to be 100% transparent. Uh, what we do with your data, we store the absolute minimum. We share only what's required, uh, and if you want it. So even if you opt in, we'll always ask for your permission. And we'll always let you understand what the car's reason is and what its intent is. Now, sorry, I'm back. Now, we're excited about the future, not just because we feel confident about our goal to humanize the interaction with the car, uh, powered and not cluttered by technology, but also we know what's hitting the road today, in the 3, the X5, the X7, and the 8. So I'll ask you to keep updated. and. Uh, to keep your cars updated. Now, there's one more thing. Um, you know, customer-centric innovation requires brilliant people um, working in a market of tomorrow. And therefore, critical software and BMW joint forces here in Portugal um, founding critical tech works in order to create those products. If you're interested, um, do go outside to the booth and check with them you know, ask them hard questions and show off your skills. We've grown already to 230 in two months. We'll be stretching beyond 500 by the end of the next year. Now, thank you, and thank Portugal. Thank you. Mm.